and action. Bum, 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 ba, bum, bum, ba, bum. Well, look who's back again. Are you ready for another lesson with Professor Victor singing you go? Here at Sisseton Wapit and College, well, let me take off all these ridiculous clothes and get started. Today is Thursday, February 15th, 2024. And today I am going to discuss as quickly as possible, I always say that, yes I know, as quickly as possible, some stuff. I'll probably cut this video in half this time, this time. So, um, without further ado, let's jump into the growing up story directions first, shall we? Let me pull it up. We're going to scroll down. Here's our Sisseton Wapaton e-learning page, and there's uh, pictures of me again in all my glorious fatness. I was having a discussion with Professor Lee the other day. She said, you only eat rabbit food. All you ever eat is vegetables. <coughs> And I said, well, then I'm a fat rabbit. So yeah, there you go, Mr. Fat Rabbit. This is something I just posted today. The directions for the growing up story and some other stuff about, uh, there's an extra credit video about uh, Don Hertzfeldt's, um, 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 excuse me, I've got hiccups now. Don Hertzfeldt's video called A L'Amour, which you can have a look and also my discussion of connecting with your audience, my previous video, but now we're gonna go to the directions on growing up. Let's see if we can connect to it. Click. It's probably gonna upload or download or something. There, yep, it's gonna do that. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Let me see the video. Directions, there we go. So we're gonna keep this as quick and short and sweet as possible. So here we have our directions. Let's see if I can pull this up using my sticky fingers. I just had an early dinner, which I shouldn't have done because it's Lent. Supposed to be due Monday the 26th by 17.30. That's 5.30 for you non-military types. The growing up story, ah, well, might as well just read it. We all have our own special growing experiences. Ooh. Whether it was something that happened to us when we were little, or even if it happened last week, we all have some lifetime milestone which we'll carry with us for the rest of our lives. Well, now's your chance to share that story. Just like uh, I said a second ago, it should be a specific experience that you believed shaped your worldview. Or maybe it helped you somehow to become a better person or the person you are today. As with the how-to paper, make sure your readers can understand what you're saying and see it in their mind's eye. What else? Clarity. Please don't choose a story that is so vanilla, vague, and watered down that nobody will want to read it. Remember we talked about that, connecting with the audience. <clears throat> make your descriptions details and examples so crystal clear that your readers will want to follow you down whatever road you take them. Let me keep going. Be creative. If you don't enjoy writing it, you're doing it wrong. More creativity. Yes, just like the other papers, go ahead, say me, I, my, no problem. Use an MLA style header, name, class, date, blah, blah, blah. Provide a nice hook. Remember, choose an experience which you would find enjoyable to share with someone, even if it's a sad experience. Answer the question, why did you find that experience meaningful? What did you learn? Is there anything special or unique about this experience? Take your readers by the hand and guide them along your road. Please, no profanity. And if you're going to give me hard copy, put it in the manila folder. Now, here is an example. Ooh, too small. There we go from several years, well, actually, I updated it. Uh, this is a sample paper uh, 
growing up and she's actually writing this a couple years in retrospect. So she's about, I don't know, 35 years old. I don't know. She's living in China and she's telling the experience about how she met her husband. And it's um, two years later. So they've been married for two years, two, three years. So she starts off talking about, she asks the audience immediately, have you ever, uh-oh, come on, have you ever felt like moving to another country would change your life? I have, and I've learned a lot. Moving from China to America, that's a pretty good hook, don't you think? I was born in Chengdu in the southwest of China, a place where pandas come from, the city of heaven. Um, Boom, here's our, here's our problem. There was a big earthquake in 20, 2008. Everybody, a lot of stuff was destroyed. It was horrible. The Chinese government asked for donations. People from all over the world responded, including a strange Indian man named Riles Nelson Salsipuedes. He brought a teepee all the way from Canada. Oh, by the way, don't forget the page numbers on here. Let me back this up because I'm going, I'm just summarizing and I'm not really giving you some instructions to go along with it. Your name, professor's name, class, due date on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side up in the corner there, your last name and the page number. So that's what she's doing. She's following directions. You give it a title and she's double-spaced it no problem get back to the story so this fella named salsi puedes brought a teepee all the way from canada he brought it because people were sleeping on the streets and then they were hanging out because she was his translator and he says well do you know anything about north america she i don't know he says what do you mean you don't know so he showed her on the map that this is where i come from showed pictures all that stuff he said, come and visit me someday. I thought he was joking, but soon he had to go back to Canada. They wrote emails to each other. They fell in love via email. And he said, well, you need to come and join me here in Canada. The Canadian embassy refused her. All her friends were making fun of her, saying, ha, 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 lai ha ma xiang chi tian e rou, which means you are like a toad wanting to eat a swan. I guess that's a Chinese saying. Um, so people were making fun of her, but they still kept in contact. And then Riley moved to America. And then he applied for an American visa. And sure enough, the USA said, hey, check it out. You've got an appointment down there in Guangzhou. You can go and uh, have a, what do you call it? Immigration interview, something like that. He applied for a fiancé visa, and she provides some more tension because she's all nervous. She talks about how nervous she is, and she goes and she stands in this long line, and everybody's trying to get their visas, and she's just one itty-bitty girl in a long line of people, and she's got a little voice, and she's all nervous when she's talking to the interviewer, and she's almost getting ready to choke but then she gets her second wind as we say in the spokane language that just means second second heart is the literal translation and she starts to get more confident and then next thing you know congratulations you got a visa and <laughs> five minutes was as long as it took she made it she married the dude and they're living in Bend, Oregon, by the way, that's the last place in the world where there's a blockbuster video. I almost said it in Chinese, Bai Chi Da, but never mind. The last blockbuster video in existence in the whole world is in Bend, Oregon, but never mind. That's an aside. And then she ends with the swan is, was delicious. And again, last name, page number, boom. This turned out to be six pages long. I'll be happy if you can give me five pages. Boop. Let's go back. Boop. It's not going to let me go back. Oh, I killed it. Anyway, that's all I want to tell you for now. Thank you so much for being so patient with me. And if you've got any questions, email me.
Come by my office right across the hall. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Ten minutes?